the nature of God. And Jesus said that nature in John 10, 10 that nature has come to have life and have it more abundantly. That nature is an abundant life. It's an abundant nature. So the blessing of God first comes to you in your spirit. The blessing of God first comes to you in your spirit. It's called eternal life. The nature of God, the abundant life, the God kind of life, the God quality of life. So hey, God puts that in you when you're born again. That's the first blessing God does. That's the first blessing. Okay? That's the first blessing God does. Now, because you are God's child, okay, God owns you spirit, soul, and body. God, you're God's child, you got born again, God owns you spirit, soul, and body. But now when you get born again, the first place that receives the effect of your salvation is your spirit. Even though God owns you spirit, soul, and body, the first place that receives the effect of salvation, that, that first experience salvation, the first place is your spirit. That's what I've been saying. That's the first place that gets it. Okay, now, but God owns you spiritual and body. So now, how does God deal with the other part? How does the other part come in conformity with this whole plan of salvation? How does it come in conformity with this whole plan, with this whole blessing of God? We're talking about financial anointing here. How does God's financial anointing, which starts from my spirit, how does it affect my mind and my body? That's the question. Now, let, let me say this to you. Before you got born again, maybe you got born again at age 40, age 20, age 15, age 10, age... Before you got born again, okay, now what this? Before you got saved, you lived in a life where you knew insufficiency and want and lack sometimes. The times you needed to do something and you could not do it. And if someone asked you, why did you, why were you able to do that you needed to do? You said, I didn't have the money for it. And this is not just something you want. I'm not just talking about somewhere you just ah, ah, I'd just like to have like 500 pairs of shoes. Not that type. I'm talking about something that you needed. You you fell short because of the fact that you know you 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 uh, uh, you fell short of that thing because you didn't have the money. You didn't have the resources to meet that need. Okay, you didn't have the resources to meet that need. So guess what happens in life? Okay, your mind gets conditioned to lack. There's sometimes you look at somebody and say. Mm, Man, I know, I wish I would, I wish I would be able to buy a Benz. But I know I can't afford one. I don't think I will buy a Benz in my life. You, you drive through some communities and say, I'm, I wish I could live in that community. But I don't think I ever afford to live in that community. Why? Your mindset is, is, has now been conditioned to financial difficulty. Your mindset has been conditioned. Sometimes you look at an ad on TV, I was watching an ad on TV and I said, hmm, we can't go there right now. I was like, just, I said it, we can't go there right now, okay? When I, what did I do? I'm not conditioning my mind to forever. Right now, this is where I am, okay? This is where I am right now, but they will come in there, I'll be able to bring it on ago. You know, without financially being constrained to, okay? Now, what the spirit of poverty does, the spirit of poverty condemns you to ruling out some things. Spirit of poverty condemns you saying, I can't afford that, I'll not be able to afford this, I'll not be able to afford that. that the spirit of poverty, lack of money, puts you in that condition where you, you just have a, you have a ceiling. Spirit of poverty puts a ceiling over you, tells you, the children of Israel, you are in Egypt. You always have to suffer, have to suffer and beg to it. It always tells you that well, you just have just enough, you don't have more than enough. So spirit of poverty has a way of putting you on, putting a ceiling over you. Either a sin of not enough, or a sin of just enough over you. So spirit of poverty does. But God wants us to be free from spirit of poverty. God wants us to be able to, Bible says, you want to lend to nations and not borrow. We should be more blessed to give than to receive. So God wants to, first of all, like I said, he, first of all, he, he blesses you, your spirit man, first of all. But he owns your soul and owns your body. So what does God do now? God wants you and I now to do the next step, or what he's going to do the next step with us, is called renewal of the mind. Renew, look at Romans 12, verse 3. Renewal of the mind. So first of all, you are saying your spirit man is, is now like God. You've got the nature of God on the inside of you. You are blessed by God. Now Romans 12, verse 3. Or oh, Romans 12, that's verse 3, sorry. Let's start from verse 2, but let's start from verse 1 so we can see the context. 
Romans 12 from verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which are in the noble service. Verse 2, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. What's he saying? You were in this world before. This is what you know. You are told that black people cannot drive certain cars. They can't live on certain parts of the, of the country. The certain communities, only, only white folks live there. Black folks don't live there. And that conditions black people in general to believe I can't live there. Therefore, when a black man lives there, guess what they say? It's an uncle Tom. It's an uncle Tom. Because in their minds, they are conditioned. They are conditioned that black people don't live in that place. That black only deserve to live in the hood or to live in, in the suburbs, some, some suburbs, some, some communities. Okay? Therefore, there's a conditioning that makes people who think that way think, I can't live on that side of town. So everybody who lives on that kind of town has sold out their blackness, as it were, therefore they are good on. And it's all because of the mindset of poverty. It's a poverty mindset. Okay? I remember when MC Hammer began to come out and do the rap and all that stuff and, you know, pray, if you, if you make it, all that a lot, of the black, a lot of the hip hop artists at that time criticized him. Say he's singing to appease the white people and blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, the brother was selling records and doing well. Next thing you know, now all them rappers are all singing with white folks too. They've all changed their minds about it because they say, oh, that's where the money's at. I'm going to go right there. But let's get back to the world. Let's get back to the world. Verse 2 Be not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do I get transformed? How does my mind get transformed? How do I not conform by the renewing of my mind? Which means that if my mind is not renewed, guess what? I will still be in conformity. If your mind is not being renewed by the word, you are in conformity. If you're not being transformed, you are being conformed. If you're not being transformed, you are being conformed. What I'm saying is that if your mind is not being renewed and you're being transformed, guess what you are? You are being conformed to this world. In the area of financial prosperity and for the financial anointing, if my mind is not being renewed by the word of God concerning money and finances and all that stuff, guess what? I'm conforming to the world of poverty, lack, want, and insufficiency. But notice this. In order for you to look at what it says, that you might be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Most of us want to prove the will of God. We want to prove that the will of God is good and acceptable and perfect. We want to prove that. We want to prove that, yes, God wants you to be rich. Yes, we've heard it before. A lot of people hear ministers preach and they're like, yes, I heard God for dollars say yes. God wants to be wealthy, yeah. I heard T.J. say that, yes, hallelujah. I heard the, they, they say it and they get excited, but they don't understand the process. They want to go from, I'm born again, yes, I'm blessed in my spirit, to, bam, blessing finances. They don't realize that there is a process there. That process there is verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, to this world of poverty, lack, want, and insufficiency. Okay? But be transformed by the will of your mind. How do you get trans? Let your mind be transformed. Of course, by the word of God. Let the word of God transform you. Let the word of God transform you. Let the word of God renew. Why does the word, how does the Bible use the word renew? I thought about it. It was renew. This young man here, if he's hungry, guess what happens? Wah, wah, wah. It goes right in the mouth. Every time he's hungry, the food is right there. He doesn't know poverty like I want. <laughs> All he knows is the abundance. I'm hungry, food is there. I'm wet and changed. He doesn't know lack and want. But then the child goes from this stage to a stage where he wants something, he says, no, you can't have it. No, you don't touch that. No, you can't have that. No, you can't have that. No. He wants, I mean, before, like right now, every time he cries, the food is there. He comes away, he, he cries for cookies or candy. Then your mom says, no, you can't have it. Guess what's happening right there? W without knowing it, we're telling the boy, you can't have everything you want. So there's, there's a conditioning that we, ex that we are exposed to in the world. A condition that says you can't have everything you want, that the world exposes us to. So the Bible says about renewing the mind. What's the Bible say? God wants you and I to have our minds go back. In fact, look, look at uh, look at Romans chapter eight. You are in Romans chapter eight, verse fifteen. Romans eight, verse fifteen.
We need to renew our minds to God's perspective concerning financial prosperity. Renew our mind concerning, not just concerning heaven and spiritual things in terms of heaven and holiness and righteousness. Those things are great and faith. Not just that. Not just that. We need to renew our minds concerning financial prosperity. Because we saw it earlier. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has not tell me to do these things. And he mentions, the first one he mentions is good news to the poor. Therefore, when you and I need to have our minds renewed, because if Christ came, that was the mission of Jesus Christ, to free us from poverty, he's bringing us to a place of abundance and wealth. Okay? If that was the mission of Jesus, then you and I will need to start thinking like him. The Bible said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind is that? I've come to preach the gospel to the poor. Philippians 2 says that. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So what's Christ's mind? He was made poor for you so that through you, through you poor man become rich. Now, we're looking at Romans chapter 8, look at verse 15. Romans 8 verse 15. It says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby you cry, Abba, Father. The word Abba is a, is a derivative of a baby language, of a dependence on the Father, a baby innocent dependence on the Father. So you have not received the spirit of bondage to fear anymore. You're no longer bound by the devil. Fear of insufficiency, lack, and want, and poverty. You are free from that. That's what he's saying. You no longer receive that with the virtual team. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Bondage again to fear insufficiency. Bondage again to fear lack and want. But you receive spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Father. So God is saying He wants you and I to go from the fear of insufficiency, the fear of lack and want, the fear of not having enough. The fear of not being able to make it, the fear of not being able to pay our bills, the fear of not being able to live well. To go from that place of fear back to that place of babyhood, Abba Father, a dependence on the Father, an innocent dependence on the Father's bounty, an innocent dependence on the Father's bounty, a place of abundance, a place of financial provision, not born to fear again. Fear what? Fear insufficiency, fear lack, fear lack of provision. But to come to a place of Abba Father, a place where we see God as El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. That's what the word El Shaddai means. It means what kind of milk do you need? He has it available. That, that's what the word El Shaddai means, the multi-breasted one. The God who is more than enough. He's got more than enough for you. So to take you from the place of fear, of not having enough, fear of insufficiency, lack of want, to a place of abundance again. Look, look at the book of, uh, uh, look at Matthew 18 and verse 3. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3. We're talking about this financial anointing. How to walk in the financial anointing. That's what we're talking about. I'm going to continue this message next week. So I'm not finishing today. I'll finish it next week. So this is part one. Now Matthew 18 and verse 3. Jesus said here, and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Where does conversion happen? In the mind. Except you be converted and become like little children. Unless you, become, unless you turn from one place. Conversion means you're turning from one place to the other. Convert. You are taking something from one form to the other. Unless you get converted like little children. How little children? Where are they? They are dependent on their father. The ch little children are dependent totally on their father. They are helpless as it were. They are dependent on their father. We're talking about abundance. We're talking about financial prosperity. So God is saying that you and I we need our minds renewed. We need our minds to be converted from the place of insufficient, the fear of bondage, or the bondage to fear, lack, want, and insufficiency. We need to realize that now you are a child of God. We need to realize that. We need to, and, and, and if you remember what it says in Romans 12, it tells you there that don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the will of the mind, that you might be able to prove the will of God. So how can I prove the will of God in your financial prosperity? Renew the mind. 
How can I prove the will of God? I said again, prayer of financial prosperity, renew of the mind. My mind has to be renewed out of poverty. I've got to get out of poverty mentality. And it's not done by braggadociousness. It's not done by, oh, well, let me just will it. I just will myself out of it. No. It says by the renewal of the mind. Renewal of the mind. So when I renew the mind, then what, what am I doing? I can now prove it. I can now act it out. When I renew my mind, then I can now prove it. A lot of times, let's 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 even look at the area of let's look at giving. A lot of people give, you know, they give, they tithe, they do all those things. But guess what? Why does it seem like it doesn't work for many people? You know why? Their mind is not renewed concerning giving. It concerns financial prosperity. Even though they are given, even when they are given, some people are given tearfully, not cheerfully. The Bible said God loves a cheerful giver. Some people are giving complainingly. Some people are giving and their mind are saying, ah, maybe the pastor is eating the money. Some people are saying all that when they're giving. Okay? So what's happening in their mind is still a poverty mindedness in their mind. Therefore, they cannot prove the will of God. Romans 12, 3. Romans 12, 2, sorry. Do not be conformed to this world. World of what? Our context here, poverty. Lack of want and insufficiency. But be transformed by the will of God. Transformed to what? Prosperity. Conversion. Jesus said, unless you're converted, be transformed by what? Love of the mind. So that you can prove. So you can prove. So you can actually prove the word of God. So you're giving your offering now. You're not giving it just, just out of tradition. You are giving it, it's sleeping. You are giving it, you are not giving out tradition. You are giving it now basically as an expression of what you believe. You are not giving it out of tradition again. You're not giving out of just religion. You are giving an expression of what you believe, an expression of the renewal of your mind. Your mind has been renewed. Your mind is renewed towards the fact that Jesus became poor for you so that you can be rich. Your mind is already renewed towards that. Your mind is renewed saying that God wants you to be wealthy. Okay? So you're sowing a seed when you're giving now. You're giving as a world in response to renew to renewed mind. I'm going to explain more of that next week. But you're giving a response to renewed mind when it comes to finances. Okay, I'm sowing a seed because I know what this, the ground, I'm going to show you the relationship between your tithe and your financial anointing. I'm going to show it to you next week. Relationship with tithing and giving to financial anointing. I'm going to show you that next week. So when I'm giving now, I'm giving knowing that I'm blessed. I'm a blessed man. When I sow my seed, it's not cursed. Therefore, my seed will multiply and come back to me because I'm not cursed. Okay, but there's a renewal of mind. Look at Isaiah 55 verse 11. Isaiah 55 and 11. Isaiah 55 verse 11. You can also write down Psalm 17 verse 15. Isaiah 55 11. You can also write down Psalm 17 verse 15. Hallelujah. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Isaiah 55 and verse 11. It says there, but let me start from verse, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways. My ways, notice it says thoughts and ways. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. He says thoughts, then it says ways. It didn't say ways first. It says thoughts, then it says ways. So in order for me to experience the ways of God, I'm going to think the thoughts of God. So it goes from thoughts to ways. God says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Some people say, some people stop there and say, aha, I know I'm human. Some people stop there. But God is saying, no, you're not human. You're my child. Dog gives birth to dog. Therefore, God gives birth to God kind too. Okay, now, let's go to verse 9. It says that, so as, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my th ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Verse 10, for as the rain cometh down, blah, blah, blah. Look at verse 11. He says, so shall my word be. So the word has an assignment. What's the assignment of the word? To change your mind. It will not return to me void, but to accomplish that which I've sent it to do, to please and to please and, and, and accomplish that which I please and shall prosper in that which I've sent it to. So God sent his word first with an assignment. The first assignment the word has is to change your mind. So your thoughts can become his thoughts. And therefore, your ways can become his ways. But if your thoughts are not his thoughts, your ways cannot be his ways. Your mind, Romans 12, 2. Don't be conformed 
be transformed so you can prove. You transform in your mind so you can prove. Your thoughts change so your ways can become his ways. Look at Psalm 17.